I am so happy to be here. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure just being in your presence. But before I get started on, on my presentation, I, I just want to read you a little something that, um, that I put together so people can understand exactly where we're going. Uh, so bear with me. It starts off like this. Have you ever wondered if both the, the Democrats and the Republicans are, who are against deficit, why do we have a deficit? Have you ever wondered if all the politicians are against inflation and high taxes, why do we have inflation and high taxes? If the people are against charter schools, why do we have charter schools? You and I do not propose a federal budget, the president does. You and I do not have a constitutional authority to vote on appropriations, the House of Representatives does. You and I do not write tax codes, Congress does. You and I do not set fiscal policy, Congress does. You and I do not control monetary policy, the Federal Reserve Bank does. 100 senators, 435 congressmen, one president, nine Supreme, Supreme Court justices equates to 545 human beings out of the three million who are directly, legally, morally, and individually responsible for the domestic problem that plagues this country. So what we have done, we have allowed people to come in and take over our city and our country. Um, the story of Benton Harbor is, is, is pretty simple. Um, I remember when I first started court watching back in 2000, um, I was just court watching because I had to figure out why the court system was so corrupt. You know, most people who, who go to the court system or get involved with the court system, they can't believe that things are happening the way they are. And I couldn't believe it myself. I, I, I go to the court course and I start court watching. And what I saw was so incredible. I saw people actually being railroaded. I saw the judges, I saw the court appointed attorney, and I saw the prosecutor attorney all working together against the people, against the poor people. If you couldn't afford an attorney, if you couldn't afford one, they'll give you a court appointed attorney, and he most likely will want you to plead guilty, regardless of whether you're innocent or guilty. Just the other day, we had the, uh, um, the incident where a young man, he, he called the police so he would not get a domestic violence case against him. So what happened was they put a warrant out for his arrest and arrested him. He came to court and told, told his court appointed attorney that I called the police so I wouldn't have to go to jail. So they put him in jail. Then his court appointed attorney told him that if he did not plead guilty to this charge, he was going to tell the judge that he was late and the judge was going to charge him with contempt of court. He refused to plead guilty and the judge charged him with contempt of court. He had to pay $7,500. Wow. Then he came back on Friday for the case of contempt of court and the judge gave him 90 days in jail. Any way it go, they plan to get you. And the reason why this is so important, you have to understand exactly what's going on in the city. And it's the whole city is controlled by Whirlpool, the corporation. They have sucked the life out of the residents in Benton Harbor. I myself, I started fighting them back in 2000, I guess 2002. That's when my mission actually started with the city. Before that, I was dealing with the court system. Now it deals with the city and the court system. Um, what I have learned is that we have to fight harder and be a little bit stronger. I have never witnessed anything like what's happening in the city of Benton Harbor right now. Uh, back in 2003, we had the uprising. Um, it really wasn't an uprising. Matter of fact, it really was just something but they made a big deal out of it. Every night they would show a different version of the uprising, of the fire. One house was on fire, they showed it for different angles. So it looked like it was bigger than what it was. And, and uh, news media came in, they brought in Jesse Jackson, they brought in people from everywhere. And they brought them in so they could begin the process of taking over the city of Benton Harbor. 
because now they're saying these people are wild savages. You know, and you got to remember this, 70% of the people that live in Benton Harbor are unemployed. 90% live below the poverty level. And, and we're, we're, we're in a, a position today where things are just going to get worse because on October the 1st, 12,600 people will be taken off the welfare roll. And that's all over the state. They're going to do that. And what they're trying to do now, they're trying to show us that we don't matter. The takeover of Benton Harbor is, is the first step for the rest of the country. This is what I'm saying. What they have done, they, first they came out with the idea with the uprising, which basically wasn't really an uprising, but they made it into an uprising. Then what they did, they decided that they was going to bring the governor in so she can say that she actually was helping us but yet she was destroying us. She came in with these ideas. Matter of fact, I was on the criminal justice committee and she wanted everybody to come to these meetings and everybody to work hard to get this thing done and she was gonna come in and make some changes. Well, the only change she made was to put us in a very, very compromising position. She allowed Whirlpool, while we are doing this, concentrating on this, Whirlpool was doing other things. They was taking the land and building, getting prepared for this golf course, the Jack Nicholas Signature Golf Course. And these 530 acres of land where they're going to build these condominiums, uh, these multi-million dollar condominiums that they're building now on the beach area. Uh, the beach itself is, is so unique that without the beach, without the beach, the golf course would be nothing. So they said the only reason that, is so, that the golf course is so important is because the beach. So they took over the beach, stopped building million dollars homes on the beach. But what we did, we, we, we kept fighting them. And in 2005, we tried to stop this. We did a recall of one of the commissioners, one who, uh, the head honcho. He was the person who was in charge of uh, uh, getting the other commissioners in line. His job was basically to make sure that they vote the way Whirlpool wanted things to be. So what they was doing was getting free land. Basically free land. They were buying lots for dollars and stuff like that. Uh, changing the, 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 uh, the title of the land. Matter they tried to change the title of the charter school and, and claiming that they owned it and actually the charter school owned it. And I'm not, uh, I don't love charter schools, but right is right and wrong is wrong. So what they did, they went out and they was caught doing this. So they got angry. So they start, what they start doing then, they start taking more land inside the city. And what we did, basically, we had to do something fast. So we put a recall together of this commissioner. Without him, there would be no Harbor Shores. There would be no Jack Nicholas Golf Course. There would be no uh, uh, million dollar condominiums on our beach. Because you have to have six votes in order to get this land. Mm -hmm. We recalled him. And when we recalled them, we were successful. The way we did it was that uh, we used the absentee ballot. You see, we were 300 votes ahead before they even got started. So they knew something was wrong. They said even Pinckney is a genius or he's a crook. One or the other. There's no, there's no in between. Either had to be one or the other because nobody is that smart to beat a whirlpool. A multi-million billion dollar company. You can't do it, they said. We, he, this guy, Yarbrough, had the largest family, and uh, um, Whirlpool had the largest bank account. So that's two things that make sure that you win every election. If you got a large family, you got people out voting for you, you got, uh, 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 you got money, and that's what they did. They flooded the community with uh, little leaflets about this guy. He's all this. He's so wonderful. He's the greatest thing there is in the world. So y'all got to vote for him. And um, so when he got defeated, they got mad. <laughs> they said nobody could beat him. Nobody. Nobody beats Whirlpool. That's what they were saying. They mad. So they said, we're going to teach you not to mess with us. So what he did, they went out and got this man named Martel Williams. They paid him $10 to say that I paid him 5 Oh, yeah. They paid him $10 to say that I paid him 5 And that started the chain reaction. 
Now what they was doing now, they was, they was uh, uh, putting themselves in a the position so they can reverse the election so they can get this land. See, without this land, the whole project, we're talking about a, a billion dollar project. It can't happen without this land, without the beach, without uh, 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 them voting to get this land. So they knew that they had to do something fast. So they had a little trial. They only found a couple of votes that was tainted. Matter of fact, Libby was at the trial. He only found a few, a few votes that was actually tainted. And they, though the votes that was tainted was the chief of police lame family votes. So, <laughs> so they kind of like, uh, you know, they, but the, the reason why they said they, they're reversing the election, they said they're reversing the election because Reverend Pinckney was involved with it. So by me being involved with the election, that automatically means that is, is, is they forfeited and took the election back. Never happened before in the history of mankind. Never happened before. Never happened, never will ever happen again, I don't think. But the point was, they decided that now they can get rid of me. They came after me. They charged me with voter fraud. Voter fraud, you know, and uh, they figured that they can get me. They figured that I didn't have much money, so most likely I would not be able to afford an attorney, but I was fortunate to be able to hire me an attorney, uh, Ted Parrish. And he, he went in there, he did a tremendous job. And uh, it ended up in a hung jury. It was a hung jury that first trial. The second trial, I was convicted, even though I had, uh, we won the case, but we just didn't get the verdict. Uh, it was an all-white jury that was motivated by something other than the truth. They didn't want the truth to be known. They didn't want them to stop that project. They knew that that project was valuable to them because now we wouldn't be where we is today. But what makes this thing so, so exciting is because now we realize that they can be defeated. See, that's where I was going with this. They can be defeated. See, if we don't get nothing else out of this, we got to make sure that we understand that these corporations can be defeated as long as we work together. But anyhow, as uh, during the process, they put me on probation. They gave me five years probation. And during the process, I wrote an article. I wrote an article for the People Tribune, which I quoted Deuteronomy 28. It simply says, if you do not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and do all the things that is right, all these things will come upon you. Come back. That's right. And he was, he was scared to death. They said, they said, they said, we got to get rid of that Pinckney guy. We got, we, look, we got to, look, we got to get, get rid of him once and for all. We can't be playing around. So they sentenced me to three to ten years in prison. And, and the reason why it, it's, it's, that it's so important for that, it shows what they can do when they lose. You see, when they lose, they get mad and then they go to their buddies because they're all connected. We're talking about the corporate world now. We're talking about what they do and how they do things. But we have to learn to work together. But here's what happened. Everything after that happened was good. I may have been in prison, had to eat that food, but we're not going to get deeply into that. But what we're going we're gonna to get to that EFM because to me, we all leading up to that. But what makes it so important, it allowed me to run for U.S. representative while I was in prison. I'm locked up in prison and running against Fred Upton, the heir of the whirlpool. Can you believe that? And they nervous. I want to debate him from prison. I want to debate him from prison. And, and he refused to debate me because he didn't look. He, didn't, he haven't done anything. He haven't done exactly nothing. What, I mean, what is he going to say? He done nothing. Only, well, Whirlpool, you know, you done messed up the whole community with Whirlpool. But anyway, we I ran for U.S. revenue. The media followed me everywhere I went. It was, it was so tremendous that, I mean, all while I was in there, they just personally what they did to me, all night long, I was like, they, even uh, the O'Reilly show had a picture of me on, on, uh, uh, on his show. He had, had me, what kind of preacher fights for justice? We already got justice here, <laughs> here in America. That, that's what he was saying. He said, we already got justice here. You know, had me, they had me in my prison uniform and, and, uh, and, and right on O'Reilly's show. So that, that was, that was kind of kind of interesting. But anyhow, the ACU came in. And what they did, I, got, I was released on appeal bond. And uh, nobody ever gets appeal bond here in the state of Michigan. 
Nobody. Once you get locked up, it don't happen. It don't happen here in the state of Michigan. And I was given an appeal bond. Now, with that... Why did it happen for you? I, I, don't, I don't See, I'm, I'm, I'm saying because of God. That's the only thing I could take. Right. You know, God, God knew what was going to happen. He knew at the beginning right. what's going to happen at the end. And so that's what, that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm giving him all, all the authority, the, uh, the praises, because I know it had to be him. But the thing was, the ACLU came in, got me out on an appeal bond. And during the appeal process, what we did, I'm back in the, out in the streets now, organizing for the next election. And this next election is so tremendous that we actually won four seats. Four Woo! seats. Absolutely. We won four seats. So now we take control of the commission. We take total control of the mission. This is 2008 now. In 2008, they decided, they decided that we're going to have a problem. So what they did, once the, the commissioners came in, they were sworn in and took their seats. Once they took their seats, they decided that they was going to have a problem. They thought that they could still come in and pay people to actually uh, uh, give them the land. At first, these guys, they was, they was about, they were about to switch sides. Let's put it that way. Soon you put them in office, they, they just switch horses right in the middle of the race, most of them. And they, they, they just do it, you know, and, and you done worked hard to get them in office, knowing they don't know how to get in office, knowing that they don't know how to run no election. They don't know how to do that, but what they did, they, they started switching horses right in the middle of the way. We had, at, after the election, we had six votes. And then all of a sudden, we was down to three votes, almost in the same position we was before. And one of these guys, um, I won't mention his name because I like him now. And uh, 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 he was, uh, we had a, a, a real, real, real strong talk. And um, the talk was more or less, you know, hey, I'm not really pleased with what you're doing, you know? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and, and what it came about, it was, it was so, it got so personal, and then he realized he saw things my way, which I know I was right. That don't mean I'm always right. That right living. Uh, <laughs> I don't, that, you know, I'm not always, but in this case, we have to, you know, we work too hard to put y'all in office for y'all to switch horses like this. So what we did, we got them all. Now we got five votes. We have them all. We got five votes now. So that means we're in control of the commission because it's nine. You got eight commissioners and one mayor. We had the mayor and we had four commissioners. And sometimes we get, we get a sixth one, you know, sometimes. Depends on how they feel it, you know, seven. It depends on what, you know, what the scoop is or, or, is it, or Whirlpool says it's all right for them to vote that. Most, it really don't really make a whole lot of difference. But the point is you've got to have at least five to control everything. So now, once Whirlpool figured out that they was not going to be in control, they sent the EFM, they accused the, the city of Benton Harbor of being in a financial wall. They say that we was $5 million in the red. And we came here to Lansing. That was the day I, ca I came here after I well, I think you was there. Right. And, and the, the, you was there too, right, Libby? When, when, when the guy said uh, the EFM, no, the, the treasurer told uh, uh, Mr. Carter, he was the, the manager of Benton Harbor, he told him that, it, ben, he said Benton Harbor is $5 million in the red, but he told him, you can give us $5 million because Benton Harbor is a city. Ben Hobbit is not a poor city. We just have poor people. You see what I'm saying? It's not a poor city. We're surrounded by water. We got, we got nothing but wealth. And they know it. That's why they're coming in trying to take it. So they already knew that they was going to take over the city. They're going to send an a, a EFM there. At that time, it was under Public Act 72. Public Act 72 did not give them the power to come in and terminate the mayor and the commissioners. It, didn't, it did not give them the power to come in and rearrange uh, uh, the community. This is what happened. So this guy named Al Pachoka, he was a House of Representatives. 
Him, Upton, and John Pro. John Pro's is the center from down, down in uh, uh, Benton Harbor Way. Uh, then you have Upton. All of them got together, and they decided that what they're talking about with the EFM, just able to control the finance, that they're not going to be able to get the job done. So they came up with an idea. They're going to rewrite Public Act 72. What they're going to do now, they're going to give the EFM enough power to terminate the mayor and the eight commissioners. Here's the deal. During this process, which seems like, you know, when you think about uh, uh, public, uh, public Act 4, before it became Public Act 4, it was House Bill 4214, 4215, 4216, 4217, and 4218. Then it became Senate Bill 153, 154, 155, 156, 157, and 158. Then it became Public Act 4. Public Act 4 is a very devastating bill. It destroys the whole community. It takes away the power from the people. Your vote means nothing. Well, this guy came in. He came in. The first thing he did was took the mayor's desk and put it down in the basement. Took what? what took his desk. Took his desk. Yeah. Took his, took his desk. Uh, Joseph Harris. That's who came in. They brought him in. And they already knew that Joseph Harris was going to come even the day we came to Lansing. They already knew that. We didn't know it, but I kind of suspected it because when he, was, when he said that your $5 million in the red, we can loan you $5 million, we knew right then and there that they was up to no good. Who's this Harris guy? Joseph Harris, he's the EFM, the Emergency Financial Manager. What's his like, history here? Like, is he, he said he was uh, up in Detroit. Uh -huh. He was up in Detroit. He was an uh, accountant for, for the school board or somebody up there. And when he left there, they was all in the red. They was, they was twice as, as much in the red as when he came. But anyhow, I'll, I'll get to that end too because where we're going now is, is more important than ever before because people need to understand exactly what an EFM do. First of all, he comes in. He don't have to tell the commissioners anything. Whatever he do, you don't have to tell the commissioners you don't have to tell the uh, residents of Benton Harbor. You don't have to tell the voters. He don't have to tell you nothing. Anything he do is final. He said, if all the people in the city of Benton Harbor voted for something and they won by a landslide and he voted against it, he wins. He said he wins. He said he's not only is he he's the chief of police, he's the fire chief. He's the, uh, uh, he's the mayor, he's the commissioners, he said, I'm everything. And he said, nothing you can do about it. Nothing. No matter what you say or what you do, there's nothing you can do about this. I'm everything. I control everything. And here's what I'm going to do for y'all commissioners. First of all, y'all fired. If y'all want to come in and have a meeting, you can have a meeting. You can have a meeting. You can take notes. Then you're in the meeting. You can't vote on nothing. You can't vote on the water. You can't even vote on who's going to be fired. You can't vote on who's going to be hired. You just hear. All you do, you can come here. You can use the telephone. You can use the telephone, and that's it. You know, you can't do nothing, you can't make no decision. They still have meetings, but all they do is open the meeting up, uh, read the minutes, and end the meeting. That's it. Does he attend those? No. <laughs> no way. He probably has a spy. Well, sh well, he don't need a spy. They can't do nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's almost like a waste, mm. you know, when you, when you think about it. But, the, but my point is this. This guy got this much power where he can make a decision where you voters don't mean nothing to him. He said it. 
He said everybody in the city voted against him. If everybody on, 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 a, on a project and he voted for it, he wins. One against 10,000 people. That's how much power this EFM has. He's in a position now where he thought that he was in total control. He was buddy buddies with Whirlpool. He was buddy buddy with uh, Cornerstone Alliance. And he thought they loved him. He thought that, <laughs> he thought that they, were, they were buddy buddy, he can do whatever he wants. Now you gotta understand this. The EFM in Pontiac, Michigan, makes $150,000. He only make $130,000. So he's gonna use a little leverage against Cornerstone Alliance and Whirlpool to try to get this up to 150. He's gonna use leverage against them. So what he do, he goes out, he goes do an investigation. He come back, he thought that he had the commissioners. He make the big announcement all over the radio. Uh, Joseph Harris, the EFM, is doing an investigation. There's some money somewhere that, that he believed that the commissioner may have used it for their own personal use. I mean, you, it, I mean, it was a big thing all over the radio. They, every day they were blasting on the radio. They got this uh, WSJM, this, this radio station, which is pro Whirlpool. Oh, it was all in the newspaper talking about what, what he's going to do. He's going to do an investigation. After he completed the investigation, he found out that the people that was behind this was actually Cornerstone Alliance, which is part of Whirlpool. And they got mad. They got mad because he was not supposed to do that. <laughs> now what you have done, you have exposed us. You have told people now we're a bunch of thieves. We've been stealing from Benton Harbor all these years, and here you come in and you're supposed to keep these commissioners in line, and you telling on us. So now, <laughs> they decided, here's what they're thinking. They said he's supposed to be leaving October the 1st. <laughs> they said they don't care where he go as long as he get out of Benton Harbor. They're trying to find a new assignment for him. But it, it gets even better than that. <laughs> because in his eyesight, what, what he's looking, look, what he's looking at, he thought that he he thought that they really loved him. See, this is what people don't understand about corporations. Once they don't need you no more, you out of here. Just a tool. You just a tool in a toolbox. That's all you are. And he was so sure that these folks love you. You should hear the way he talked. Some of the stuff he said in the newspaper is almost ridiculous. You think you have, when you go talk to him, you have to take a gun with you because you don't know what he might do. He's just that way. This guy is something. He was, I mean, just the other day, uh, uh, they tried to take this lady land with a bike pad, and he's telling her, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, you just wait, you know. And, uh, I mean, big article in the newspaper about this. Big picture of him, he's talking, because he thought the day was with him. He thought that he could do whatever he wanted to do. The EFM is something that you people need to understand. It's coming. It's coming to every city. They done trained 400 of them just for the state of Michigan. 400. And they're moving in. School systems everywhere. But we can stop them. See, whatever happens in Benton Harbor is the testing ground. They had no idea that it was going to turn out like this. No idea. They thought that the people, we don't have money, we don't really have resources, but we got people power. That's why it's so important for, for, the, uh, uh, for, for May 25th, starting May 25th, next year, 212, where we're going to have that mass demonstration. But the EFM, he has to know, even when they bring in another one, more favorable to them, it's coming. Anytime you're dealing with an EFM who has that much power, he's a dictator. That's what he is. And you can't go against him. Ain't nothing you can do, he told you. If all the people voted against him, and, you know, and he voted for something else, he wins. So what are you going to do? He's the fire chief. He's the police chief. He's over uh, 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 what is safety. He over uh, uh, housing. He over, he over the water department. Everything you can think of, he's over it. And, and yet he tell you this. 
He'll fire people. He'll hire people. He fired all the people that lived in Benton Harmon, probably we being from all over. But the thing was, we did have a good day. We had a good day, May 7th. That was one of the best days that we had. I thought it was tremendous. It was the day we had our Blossom Time Parade. And I, I, I tell you, it was uh, Governor Snyder came. He was the Grand Marshal. Yes, he was the Grand Marshal of the parade. But he thought that all these people was for him. I mean, it was so wonderful to see so many people come from all over the state. We had so many people. I don't know, thousands of people showed up. And we all lined up on the bridge. We lined up on the bridge. And here comes, see, Snyder didn't want to ride inside the convertible. He didn't want to ride because he thought all these folks was for him. He thought all these people, because a majority of them was white people. And he thought that these was all his people that coming out to cheer him about him taking over the city of Benton Harbor. So he, instead of him in the, uh, in the, um, in the convertible, he comes by, he's just waving at everybody. Everybody, he gets to right where everybody turned their back and starts shouting, recall Rick, recall Rick, recall Rick, recall Rick, recall Rick. Recall Rick, recall Rick, recall, and then everybody started peeling off and joined the parade. It was, it was, it was so, so tremendous, and we just followed behind him. Recall Rick, recall, everybody was pushing that way, and he, 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 he thought all those folks with him, and you should have saw the look on his face. He, oh, he was redder than red. He, he, look, he was so intimidated that he didn't know what to do. He just, he was, he called, he just waved and, and, and yeah. And everybody just peeling off. It was, it was the, look, it was the greatest demonstration I've been in. And I, I'm telling you that. I, there was nothing more important than that demonstration because it showed him who we really are. You see, a lot of times people don't do stuff. We let them get away with things. We let them do what they want to do. We have to show them that we're willing to take a stand. And on that day, and the best part about that. His SUV came up and he ran and jumped in that SUV. <laughs> and we went after him. That was a good part. He he running, he driving it, move faster. <laughs> You're not fast going fast enough. But we followed him, intimidated him. And, and and the thing was, we did what we needed to do. The rest of the country, the rest of the state, we got to do what we need to do. Too many times we allow them. We allow them to do things. And we don't react until it's too late. We got to be a little bit proactive now. We got to start getting ourselves together, preparing ourselves for this. And, you know, like now, what they're doing at Benton Harbor, they're preparing for our next move. They got the, we got this uh, uh, neighborhood stability program, too. It's a, a program, $14 million. It's allocated to the residents of Benton Harbor. What Cornerstone Alliance did, they forfeited, they, they had $168,000 of bad loans. Bad loans that they gave out. They gave, not to, not to the people living in Benton Harbor, other people. Not to the people living in Benton Township, other people. Not, not the black folks, let's put it that way. And, uh, uh, and these people, they forfeited on, on the loan. So, well, Cornerstone Alliance was $168,000 in the red. Normally, they always suck money away from the city of Benton Harbor anyway. But this $14 million, what they're going to do, they bought this building for about a dollar. They're selling it to her for $900,000. What they're going to do is then they're going to go out and get the contractors to redo the building. They get 15% or whatever that is. And what they're doing now, they're going to take that $168,000 right off the top of that. So they, what they're doing now, they're taking money directly from the residents of Benton Harbor and use it for their own personal use, like they've been doing all along. We got a place where uh, Cornerstone Alliance bought this, this lot of houses where they're going to be building these high-class, high homes. The money is supposed to be used for the, for the poor. It's for poor people. But they're using the money for themselves. I just found this out, and what I did, I contacted HUD. HUD wants to talk to me about it, because we, we have the evidence to support what we're saying. 
Because they were so bold, they figured that nobody's going to stand up to them. Who's going to find out about it? We've been stealing money for years. <laughs> Nobody ever caught us. Now we got them. We got them. That $168,000, they're going to have to pay that. They, that's going to come out of their pocket. They're not going to get that $14 million. But the point is, as long as they have an EFM there, as long as they got him, he allows them to do whatever they want to do. Anything they want to do, if they say it that morning, is done that afternoon. So that's why it's so important that we understand uh, uh, where we're going with this. We have to reverse this. We have to take the time out and decide how we're going to do things. We got to let them know. We got to tell them enough is enough. And it can't be done by the residents of Benton Harbor. Everybody got to take part in this. You know, it, it can't because we can't fight them. We don't have the resources to fight them. We talk about multi-billion dollar company and you got the governor helping you? You know you got issues. We can't, the governor and you got Whirlpool, uh, uh, you got a corporation and you got government fighting against the people. Fascism. That's what it is. They're joining hands. And we have to try to decide where we're going with this. It's time that we do something. It's time that we take this thing to a whole different level. It's time that we change the way we do business. Well, it's time that we take over the people that are taking over. That's what we do. We have to start the takeover of the takeovers. And that's what we got to do. It's time that we move this thing to a whole different level. Any time that you can bring somebody in and take over your city and do whatever they want, don't live there, don't vote there, and can do whatever they want, you got a problem. What we have is a dictator. We have a real live dictator here. And this man is serious. He wants to be paid. He don't care where he get the money from. You know, if we'll pay him, he'll be happy with that. But he won't whirlpool money because they got more of it. And they're going to give him whatever he wants. So we have to decide how far we're going to allow him to go. Because it's coming to your city next. We have to learn to take this thing to a whole different level. Until we make these necessary adjustments, it's going to continue this way. So let's change the way we do it. We need y'all, the city of Benton Harbor. We need y'all to come down there. We need y'all to join us in this fight. I don't know no other way of doing it. My thing is to spread the word. Let people know where we're coming from and what we need to do. It's important. It's important that we do this right now. Right on. Amen. Uh, Amen. All right.